All right, this week we're going to talk about work energy theorem and conservation of energy. We're going to start with the work energy theorem. Um, so if you have work being done, you have a change in energy. Uh, sometimes you'll see this as a change in kinetic energy, but um, it's really both potential and kinetic. So if you have work being done, you have to ask yourself if your work is positive or negative, uh, internal or external. If you have internal forces, your work uh, does not contribute to a change in energy and your energy is conserved. If you have external forces, you will have a change in energy, whether your energy increases or decreases. So. Our internal forces are going to be those that have uh, a potential energy equation that goes with them. A uh, way to remember which forces are internal versus external is if you have a potential energy equation. So we do have a potential energy equation for springs. And we do have a potential energy equation for uh, gravitation. Everything else is going to be an external force. So your force normal, your tension, your air resistance, your frictional force, and your applied force. So remember, if you have a force in the same direction as your displacement, you have positive work being done. If you have force in the opposite direction of your displacement, you'll have negative work being done. All right, so uh, let's use our equation. So our work changing kinetic energy can be expanded. So my work is my force times my displacement. Uh, you can add uh, the theta if you need to and you're changing kinetic energy. Change in anything is going to be your final minus your initial. So my final kinetic energy identified with the subscript F minus my initial kinetic energy and we'll identify the velocity with a, a initial velocity with a subscript I. So this is our equation um, in its long form. Sometimes you can look at it like this. Sometimes you might need to expand it like this. So uh, let's do a few problems together. What is the amount of work required to increase a 1100 kilogram car speed from 20 to 30 meters per second? So we want the work being done and we were given a final and initial velocity. So we want to keep this part of our equation expanded And uh, you can't combine the velocities. You can't um, do final minus initial and then square it because it'll change the order of operations. Um, but I do believe you can do one B squared minus B initial squared. All right, and then we can plug in our numbers. So my work being done is going to be equal to my change in kinetic energy, which is 1,000 times 30 squared minus 20 squared. And of course, I didn't get a calculator before starting this. So 30 times 30. Hold on, I put that in wrong. Times. All right. So this gives me a change in energy. And positive work is being done here. I know this because I'm going from a lower energy to a higher energy. All right, let's do a few more. 
As a 600 kilogram object is pushed horizontally with a force of, of 100 newtons and gains 500 joules of kinetic energy, through what distance did the force act? So my change in kinetic, my work is equal to my change in kinetic energy. My kinetic energy here, the change in kinetic energy is 500 joules. And I've been given a force, so I can say that and ask for a distance. So my force times my distance is equal to my change in kinetic energy, which is equal to 500 joules. If I want my distance and I've been given my force, I'll just divide both sides by my force to give me my displacement. So my kinetic energy or change in, change in kinetic energy, 500 joules, my force, my distance is what I'm, or displacement is what I'm looking for. So I'll take the 500 divided by 100 to give me five meters. So you can um, expand your equation if you need to. This one, we expanded what our definition for work. We did not have to expand our definition for kinetic energy. We were just given our kinetic energy in joules and not a speed and velocity. So you just have to um, read the question and identify what has been given to you and then make your equation um, appropriately. Let's see. Uh, let's just keep going. So we've got a rifle can shoot a 4.2 gram bullet. This is my mass. I have my velocity. The work done on the bullet over a distance, we have my displacement. What is the average force on the bullet? So my mass needs to be in kilograms. So I'm going to move my decimal place three spots. And everything else is in their correct unit, so I don't have to move anything else around. And we're looking for force. So before the rifle shoots the bullet, we can say that the bullet has an initial kinetic energy of zero. So when I am going to expand my equation because I was given uh, or I'm looking for a force, I was given a distance is equal to my final minus my initial kinetic energy. But because my initial velocity is zero, I have no initial kinetic energy. So I can just set my final kinetic energy equal to my force times displacement. And if I want my force by itself, I'll just divide both sides by D. This will give me force is equal to one half mv squared over d or because of the one half you can just write it mv squared over 2d same difference and we can plug it into our calculator times When you're plugging this into your calculator, make sure that you're putting parentheses um, around your denominator and your numerator, because otherwise your calculator will want to divide here before it's time to do that. So let's see what we got. All right, I ran out of room, so I'm going to write my answer over here. Seven new ends. There we go. Um, I'm going to read through this, see if there's any other ones that were tricky. I'll make a second video if there is.